this is what I mean when I've said this year, you know, writing is never f finished. It's just due, right? I mean, you could polish and polish and polish. And I think this exercise helps us see the value of second and third and fourth draft writing. I think the a lot philosophy of in my class is a little bit different than some of the uh, philosophies I've seen in other writing classes. The, the, the philosophy in my class is simply every kid improves. Uh, that's a little bit different than sorting winners from losers. And part of my challenge in my classroom is I'm working with students that have a wide, wide range of ability. I have kids who can hardly write a paragraph, and I have kids who are going to be top college students, often in the same class. So I am not going to take a, a ninth grader writing at the fifth grade level and turn him into a tenth grade writer the next year, but I might take him from the fifth grade to the seventh grade, or I might take him up another notch. And so that's my goal, is that everyone improves. Now here's the part, your thesis statement that gets a little bit fuzzy. If I'm going to interact with a paper, that interaction or whatever I put on your paper is meaningless unless that interaction drives you to move your paper to a better place. Sometimes in class I use the metaphor of a, of a boxer. You know, a boxer has a trainer. The trainer would never say to the boxer, you know, this is going to be a rough fight. I'll see you in the, at the end of the 12th round. Good luck. Goodbye. No, what happens is, is that the boxer comes back after every round and the trainer gives him advice. The trainer says, keep your hand up or watch your left or watch the jab and works with the boxer as the boxer is, is working his way through the match. Well, I think that's the same with, with, with young riders. They need the feedback while they're still working on the paper.